Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptised by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak and you hear in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is no coincidence that our Gospel talking about John the Baptist is read in this church in Bishopstone of St John the Baptist. It is a joy to be in here. Yes, on my own, but surrounded by angels and archangels. I wonder if you remember Mystic Meg. She appeared when the Saturday Night Lottery first began. She was dressed as a rather beautiful but scary fairy witch surrounded by swirling smoke and sitting in front of a glowing globe. She would then predict the winning numbers of the week. Her glamour and certainly her success rate dimmed over the weeks and she was silently dropped as the numbers buying tickets rose. Our prophets in today's readings, Isaiah and John the Baptist, do you see them as mystic Meg figures? Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert, a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. Calls Isaiah. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, cries John the Baptist. Beautiful words. But of course, they are not actual predictions such as Mystic Meg attempted. The biblical prophets were not full of doom and gloom as sometimes they are painted. They were actually trying to show that in the world where they lived, there was always hope. If only the people would heed 
God's call. Hope might seem a far cry when we picture hills and mountains crumbling, perhaps into those very green and lush valleys. There was such a disaster in Peru in the 1970s when a mountain did indeed crash down and engulf a valley and its villages with 18,000 people losing their lives between tons of mud and rock. Sometimes periods such as Advent and Lent in our year of faith can seem to bury us beneath the rubble of guilt. We try to heed the prophet's warnings. We try to see hope. But this year of all years, it is so, so difficult. With the uncertainty of the progress of the pandemic, with the desperate news of so many deaths worldwide. These are certainly times when we can become so entrapped in this quagmire of sad and hopeless feelings that we forget to thank God. We forget to lift up our voices with strength even in our prayers for others, we often rush into intercession for them instead of remembering them with joy, with confidence and with love. Maybe instead of bemoaning our lot or the lot of others, we could actually look for what is good Look for what shows God's power and love in action. That was what the prophets were calling their people to. The glory, the wonder, the joy of God. Advent is this time of hope. And we are the prophets of that hope. It is us who can bring hope to God's people. It is us who can show God's people where that hope is. It is us who can be sustained in that hope ourselves. We have, of course, so much to learn from the forebears of our faith. So here is a light-hearted story of a Jewish man who visits a rabbi and he complains of his unbearable life. There are nine of us living in one room. Our situation is dreadful, rabbi. What can I do? Do you have a goat? The rabbi asks. Rather taken aback, the man replies, yes, I do. It's tied up in the yard outside. Take the goat into your room with you. What? Take the goat into your room with you. Do as I say. Live with a goat in your room for a week and then come back and see me. The week goes by fairly slowly, I would think, and the man returns. It is terrible! The goat is filthy and we cannot stand it! Go home, let the goat out and come back in a week. After a week, the man returns, absolutely radiant. Life is beautiful, he says, sweet smelling and room to breathe. 
Now the goat has gone and there are only nine of us, we enjoy every minute of being together. Be encouraged today as we think of those ancient prophets to be thankful so through that fire of thanksgiving we are ready to greet Christ with love and joy in everyone we meet and in everything we do and say. Amen.